All right. Well, good morning again, everybody. Again, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we are so happy that you're joining us for this mid-year meeting on this Saturday. I know 2021, 2020 was a really hard year. Uh, we're hoping 2021 is, is much better. Uh, and before we get started, I really want to, um, I want to introduce our presenters today. Um, my name is Barbara, so I'll start introducing myself. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Barbara. I'm the Executive Director of Dream and Green. Um, and I am super happy that you all um, have decided to take the, the this challenge on this year. Um, I'd like to introduce Alexandra. I'm sure you all know her. She is a program manager. She definitely has been in contact with uh, all of you um, and is the one that if you have any questions throughout the program uh, that you would reach out to. And uh, she runs she runs the show for the, <laughs> for the grade schools challenge. I also would like to introduce a new member of our staff. Uh, which is a which is Marika Van Wee, and she is our public ally this year. She will be with us for the next ten months, and already she has been an amazing addition. Uh, and she is helping us with a lot of technical stuff and putting um, a lot of graphics together, looking at our data. Um, we've definitely involved her <laughs> in all aspects of the program. So I just wanted to introduce the team. And uh, with that, uh, I'm going to end the poll and share results with all of you. And as you can see, um, most people want to learn about new opportunities. So you're definitely going to get that. We are going to uh, have opportunity for schools, uh, for teachers present today to network with others. And hopefully you will get um, more information about climate education through the resources that we are going to share. And again, um, as I mentioned, if you have any questions, uh, you can put it in the chat. When we go to breakout rooms, we will have the ability for people to um, interact. So with that, I'm going to pass it on to Alex to get mm -hmm. this party started. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. So just as a reminder about who Dream and Green is, um, you know, our mission is to really empower individuals to take action on climate change. And we do this through assisting, you know, diverse organizations, including schools, households, local governments, and businesses to really reduce their environmental footprint. So by establishing partnerships in our community, we develop, implement, and oversee educational programs and workshops um, for all ages, but with a particular focus on K through 12 students through this Green Schools Challenge. Uh, Dream Green was founded back in 2006 by three lawyers to address the unique environmental challenges that threaten the future um, of our community. And so the organization has really grown from three schools, from a pilot program in three schools, to now serving over 110 uh, schools annually in both Miami-Dade and Broward, and sometimes even uh, in Monroe County. Oh, yep. Perfect. So as I mentioned with the poll, uh, we definitely want to hit the objectives that you have uh, identified. And uh, here it, it matches a lot of the objectives that we have set for the meeting um, ourselves. So we definitely want this to be an opportunity to bring teachers together for program updates and upcoming opportunities. Um, we also want to solicit uh, your feedback for us to be able to improve the program. Uh, and as I mentioned, during uh, later on when we have the breakout sessions, you'll be able to uh, either you know, ask us questions directly um, and share with each other. We will also be working in the breakout rooms to identify uh, local environmental issues, uh, finding root causes of those issues and identify, identify stakeholders and make a plan of action um, for moving forward this year. So definitely hitting on continuing the climate change education. 
So just as a refresher for our timeline, the Green Schools Challenge is a year-long program running from September to May. Uh, the program began in, with a professional development training back in September, uh, which I know a lot of you already attended. And it seems like a lifetime ago now. Um, but after the training, equipped with the knowledge and tools, teachers returned back to their schools to focus initially on the three pillars um, to help schools build the foundation of the program. So throughout the year, from October through March, there are the six environmental topics that we have and with an activity for each of those. And those topics include energy efficiency, water conservation, waste reduction, alternative transportation, green living, and food security. Uh, teachers submit documentation for activities completed and earn points according to a rubric, which are all on the curriculum websites that you guys have been using. Um, and each activity comes with a lesson plan and the aligning benchmarks um, that we've pulled out. Um, and again, since the program is set up as a competition, each school is encouraged to complete uh, the pillars and as many lessons as they can. Uh, each activity and lesson is given a specific amount of points through a rubric system and schools accrue points throughout the year. And so then we'll have our end of the year award ceremony um, to, to highlight all these accomplishments that you guys have been working on. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, this year did not come without its challenges, uh, the starting of the 2020-21 uh, academic year. So to alleviate some of the, the strains that we know that you guys have, um, we got rid of due dates except for one, um, just to give you some more flexibility. So the final due date for all submissions, including the beginning of the year activities, uh, monthly challenges, and the end of the year activities will be April 30th. Um, in April, we'll send out a teacher survey as well, and, which will ask you to complete four points. You'll also receive points for hosting the Eco Summit, uh, and we'll discuss that in, in a few minutes. But um, the last step is to assess your environmental goals that you set at the beginning of the year. So um, this will be via, done via Google Form, and the, it is already on the curriculum website. There are no penalties for not uh, reaching your goal. So if you set very lofty goals and you were not able to reach them, don't worry, we're not gonna say tisk tisk or take points off or any of that. Um, this is really a tool to identify um, what your individual school goals can be for that year. And then we'll ask you um, to reflect on why you did or did not reach those goals. What could have helped you to achieve those goals and who could have helped? Also, because we are an official partner of Miami-Dade County Public Schools, participating in the Green Schools Challenge allows your school to earn points towards STEAM designation. So I want to, you know, we want to always keep repeating uh, the uh, requirements because I know that it's really important for, for teachers to get those points towards their STEAM designation. So uh, for us, the minimum requirements you are required to complete in order to get those points are to complete the beginning of the year activities and at least three monthly challenges. So uh, as you saw in the previous, in the previous um, PowerPoint presentation, the, power, the slide, um, those beginning of the year activities were to create the green team, um, you see there, green team and pledge, uh, complete the environmental self-assessment, and develop environmental goals for the year. So you would have to do those three activities and three um, monthly challenges, and you can choose any from that uh, that we have. And as you are, I hope that you have been able to see, you can choose to do our lessons that we've created, or you we have the option of you submitting a lesson on a topic. Maybe you have a really good energy efficiency and conservation lesson that you've done in previous years. Um, please share that with us and that will be part of the monthly challenge. You don't technically have to do any of our lessons, um, but we do have great partners that we've worked with this year to create these lessons. Um, and again, if you have ideas, please share them with us and they will give you points for the overall competition. 
And just to, to add on to what Barbara said that, you know, for the STEM designation, you don't need to do anything. The STEAM office will contact us and I'll give uh, Chris Carranza a list of schools that completed them. Um, and so if you are concerned or, or you want to know if you've reached that or you want to know what activities you're missing, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I keep, you know, a list and, and a spreadsheet of everybody's scores and what they've completed. So if you'd like to know where you're at or you're concerned something's missing, just reach out and I can definitely uh, give you an update. Um, so in addition to completing um, all the activities that Dream and Green personally has put together and put forth through the Green Schools Challenge, we also really want to reward your schools for initiatives and opportunities that you're already taking advantage of. Um, these include and are definitely not limited to what's listed here. I know it does say elementary school at the top, but we do have a list for middle and high schools, um, but a lot of them are, are um, the same on each of the three lists. Um, so as you can see, there's some that's specific for Miami and some for Broward. Um, examples include, you know, beach cleanups, Earth Day initiatives, poster contests, um, bike walk to school days, etc. I know some schools participated in the Fairchild Challenge as well, so we definitely want to give you credit for that. Um, so there is a separate submission for bonus activities on the website, and you'll just go in and you'll just tell us what the activity was, um, and then we can give you points for that. If you're working on something that's not on this list, just email me um, just to double check and I'll make sure that you get credit for it as well. Um, I know that this year is different and I'm sure that a lot of you have gotten creative um, with some of these activities and maybe some distance learning things. So we'd love to, to learn about that and hear what you did this year. And again, um, just to uh, go to why we're doing bonus activities and why we think it's important, um, just because we know that you guys are already doing amazing stuff in your school. And so we want there to be a synergy, you know, um, we want there to, this program to be holistic. And even though we provide, you know, lessons that we think are important for environmental sustainability uh, and dealing Dealing with environmental issues, um, we know that there are things that go beyond your classroom. Uh, and so we want to acknowledge that there is a community of environmental activism and we want to highlight those, um, those partners and those activities. Uh, for example, through this bonus activities, there is in the middle and high school, one a new initiative is uh, the IC change where students, you just simply using their phone can record um, various changes, either flooding, or they can do, uh, they can be part of citizen science projects uh, created by IC change. Um, you know, a lot of schools have participated in previous years in the seven day challenge that's coming up now for our Earth Day. Um, so again, we know that you guys are doing a lot. So we want to build a community and we want to highlight those that we know um, are doing things for environmental sustainability and helping towards that climate action. So in April, we mentioned uh, quickly before that we encourage all schools to um, do an eco summit. And the eco summit is really to showcase the work done by the schools and each school is encouraged to either uh, organize an event at their school to present the lessons, initiatives and le knowledge learned uh, in their school community. Uh, and it can be done in various ways. It can be either through STEM nights as previously mentioned, it could be Earth Day activities. Um, some schools have end of the year school fairs and it's really left up to each school how to engage their parents, teachers, and others. And really Eco Summit is to share with others and try to teach others what the students have learned. Now for the high schools, the last few years, uh, DIG has organized an Eco Summit for schools to meet up. Um, we have partnered with the Parks and Rec Department and have hosted the event at, um, you know, at a local park where schools got tables and presented their work for general audience. It also had included a gallery exhibit and even performances relating to environmental topics by students. Now, obviously this year that is kind of left up in the air. Uh, we're still deciding if this event will be hosted in person 
or virtually. So uh, please stay tuned and we'll give you more information as we know things are changing so quickly. Um, you know, ideally we'd love to have that event in person um, because there is something about you know, schools sharing with other schools uh, and opening it up to the to the public, to their parents and everything. Um, but we want to follow CDC guidelines. We want to follow what the county has set forward because we know, you know, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. So uh, to be determined. <laughs> and on that note, another to be determined will be our award ceremony at the end of the school year. Um, so at the end of the year, we reward those hardworking schools that have been implementing sustainability practices and environmental education in their schools. So we love to host an award ceremony in person um, where schools will receive banners, trophies, you know, prizes. Last year we did move it online and made it virtual, um, but we were still able to have, um, you know, a great time. So we will, like Barbara said, we're going to wait and see, you know, what May will hold um, if we're going to be doing it in person or virtually, but we will definitely be holding one either way. So we can definitely shout out to, to all you hardworking schools. So a big part of the program is for us to um, know what you guys are doing. And so how do we know that? Not just by the Google form you guys submit, uh, telling us how many students participated and what classrooms and all of that stuff. But, you know, we also want to see the photos of your submission. Even though we don't physically collect all of the things that you do in your classroom, um, we want to see what the products are, uh, either the experiments that you put, uh, you do with your students, or again, the product that they create. So please share your photos uh, and videos with us. That is part of uh, the point system that we have. Uh, and so that is a way to show that you've done the, the activity. If, the, if they're too large to attach to an email, um, there are different ways in which you can share with us, as you could see on your screen. You know, you can use wetransfer.com, you can um, put it on Google Drive and share it, and, or you can also use Dropbox. Uh, again, if you have an issue with us sharing some of these, because what we'll do at times, and I'm sure if you follow us on social media, you've seen that we share um, various things that are, are the teachers send us. If there's any issues with privacy and everything, just let us know, um, you know, can't use this photo or, you know, we'll, this is only internal and we will definitely make sure that we follow those wishes. So continue on this, the social media. Um, we love social media engagement, engagement and we definitely wanna highlight all the fantastic work that you and your students are doing throughout the year. Um, so we love when you share on your social media pages and make sure that you tag us on whatever platform you're gonna use. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter um, and all the handles are right there. And then we also have you know a couple hashtags that we suggest. So definitely if you're gonna be posting on social media, make sure to tag us so that we can see it and then we can share it with our network as well. So as in past years, we're excited to offer uh, grants to support the green initiatives that are unique to each of the schools. Um, visit our website for the application form and to get ideas from previous years. Uh, we want these initiatives to be student led. Uh, we want the grant projects to stimulate solution uh, to stimulate solutions focused thinking, and the grant program is also an important learning tool in and of itself. By asking the green team students to work together uh, to conceptualize and brainstorm projects, demonstrating various sustainability themes, writing proposals, developing budgets and evaluation criteria, and then executing those projects, as students learn important leadership tasks around project management developing skills um, applicable to a myriad of future careers. Uh, we have divided our grants into three types. So we have our challenge grants that are given October through March. Um, and we give three $350 grants per quarter to support uh, challenge activities. We also have Eco Summit grants in April. And again, they're up to $350 to support that showcase of their students' green projects and the entire school and community. 
we uh, have also integrated competition registration and fees grant, and that's also from October through April. And it covers the costs of competitions, registration fees, material reimbursement, and travel, you know travel in the future, <laughs> obviously, probably not this year, but um, specifically this grant also helps the design and build competition uh, created for high schools. And I see a couple of teachers that are participating in that um, that are eligible to, re to receive that competition registration uh, grant. Now, during the breakout rooms, we're gonna be using a process called the, um, created by Earthforce, one of our partners. Uh, and it serves as a great resource to help students to come up with and implement environmental activities. So that's something we're gonna be highlighting today as a great way in which to um, think about these challenge grants and how to uh, create projects, um, create objectives, and then create a plan of action. So something we wanted to, to just bring attention to um, during this meeting, I know we've just kind of discussed it previously and we've had a training specifically on green apple designation, um, but it is becoming um, an interest of, of Miami-Dade County Public Schools to get more green apple designated schools. So we wanted to kind of bring it to the forefront of your mind um, and kind of explain the process um, and how we can help you with that. So the green apple designation program is uh, something that is overseen by the Florida Department of Environmental Protection uh, to recognize those schools that have made the commitment and taken the steps towards uh, being more sustainable. It encourages schools to conserve, protect natural resources, um, and it follows the green movement, movement um, which can save schools money on their utilities and also generate good publicity while protecting the environment. Um, so as you can see on the right-hand side, there's a list that list is actually from 2019. Um, but we've definitely seen an increase in green apple schools in Miami-Dade and Broward. Um, we're up to 11 green apple schools now in Miami-Dade County and nine in Broward. So that's great to see um, versus the four in Miami-Dade County that we had uh, less than two years ago. So our goal is to help more schools through the application process. Um, and one way that we did that uh, two years ago is that our environmental self-assessment, which is one of the pillars that you completed at the beginning of the year, is taken directly from the application for the Green Apple designation. So you've, if you've already completed that, then you're well on your way to submitting for Green Apple. Um, so the assessment helps you identify areas of improvement as well um, in case you don't hit all the benchmarks at this moment. Um, and so in addition, we also want to offer up um, a contact that you can reach out to for the application process. Um, her name is Michelle Drucker, and she's the environmental chair of uh, Miami-Dade County Public Schools PTA. Um, and she will, she has personally pledged to help any school and walk them through the application process. So her email is up there on the screen. Um, and I'll also include it in a follow-up email that I'll be sending out. Um, but definitely, you know, if this is something that you're thinking about, doing or um, someone else in your school has thought, then this is definitely the time to maybe look at that application and see where you're at and, and use that contact that will help you through that um, application process, especially if you're taking this on by yourself. So one of the um, initiatives that we want to highlight today uh, is our City of Miami Mayor's Challenge. Um, I'm sure you guys know that in South Florida, Biscayne Bay is in a health crisis. And you've seen what's happened uh, just last year um, and even in the last few weeks and the threats that could possibly get even worse if we don't do anything. You know, the fish kill that you saw, the algal blooms that we've seen in various parts. And so we've partnered with the Ocean Conservancy and the City of Miami to bring K through 12 schools, um, the mayor's challenge. Uh, so the City of Miami Mayor Francis Morris is calling for schools to create a PSA video that highlights the threats to Biscayne Bay, the current efforts that are there to save it and additional possible solutions. Now, uh, public schools located in City of Miami are eligible to receive prize money for top videos but um, we invite all schools, including Broward schools, to submit videos. And so the schools that are outside of the city of Miami 
uh, will receive uh, bonus, bonus points for their submission. And we'll also be highlighting top videos uh, through our website and through various other partnerships through the Ocean Conservancy as well. So we definitely encourage uh, for every school to participate uh, and to have your schools um, look at this local issue that is, is really pressing right now. Uh, and so I think we're gonna share a little video that was created by the City of Miami Mayor um, to give you an introduction on the, the, the problem that's happening in Biscayne Bay. And this will also help us with uh, our breakout rooms that we will be going into soon. Floridians rely on clean and abundant fresh water, along with healthy oceans and coastal environments for work and play. Water is part of our DNA. It permeates our neighborhoods and serves as a lifeblood of our city. It is estimated that 14 billion in annual wages are earned in ocean related jobs, with 83% of all ocean jobs focusing on tourism, making it extremely important to protect our local waters, not just for health reasons, but for economic reasons as well. Within the city of Miami, Biscayne Bay is in a health crisis. This dynamic and diverse marine ecosystem is home to many species and serves as a nursery for marine life. As Biscayne Bay borders the city of Miami, the things we put in and on the ground directly impact the health of the bay through runoff. Three major problems are affecting the health of Biscayne Bay. Sewage contamination, excess nutrients, and litter pollution. There are many reasons why water quality and conservation are important to protect the health of Biscayne Bay and our community. Why do you think bay health is important? This is the question we're asking our students to explore. As part of my mayor's challenge, I am challenging our local schools to produce a public service announcement video proposing a project or initiative that can significantly reduce pollution in our bay. Winners with top scoring videos will be awarded with a grant of up to $1,000 to implement these ideas as real solutions. Awards will be announced at the Green Schools Challenge Youth Eco Summit in April. The challenge gives you the key to change the future of our bay and our city. Good luck, students. Great. Um, and so for the breakout sessions, and we're, ooh, we're actually a little early. I love when that happens, but usually it never happens. Um, when we do our breakout rooms, which in a second we'll divide everybody into breakout rooms, uh, we will be able to go through uh, a, the earth force process, as I mentioned before, and we'll talk a little bit about more, which again is a national organization that we're partnering with this year uh, that focuses on civic engagement for students. And they have the six step process that helps students really take responsibility. Oh, there it is. <laughs> um, for implementing ideas that they feel uh, are important to their community. Now, this year, uh, we are not completely implementing all six steps and we've kind of break it, we've broken those six steps down into three major, major sections, which is the explore, decide, and act um, for our processes here. And so again, this is just meant to be used as a resource if you would like. Um, but we will share with you uh, a lot of the um, a lot of the resources that they provide. They have their own website, and we'll go into it a little bit more detail. Um, but for today, after having viewed the video, and I I just see that Alex just shared with everybody that we have the mayor's challenge video um, for everybody to share, and we'll share that with everybody. Lots of sharing, but. <laughs> um, you'll be able to use that video as a jump off and we want to use it today as a jump off to focus already on a community that has an issue um, that we're going to pose to be solved, that we need to be solved. Um, so we're going to divide everybody uh, into three breakout rooms. And as I mentioned, during the breakout rooms, we'll have an opportunity for people to unmute themselves and uh, communicate with each other and um, network a little bit. Uh, and each of us, uh, Alex, Marek, and myself, will be leading one of the rooms. 
uh, we have given now we have a little bit more time, which is great because we thought we were going to be super tight on time <laughs> doing uh, these activities. So we'll go through some of these steps um, with the mayor's challenge in mind. Um, and again, this is just a way for you to take the information, to take some of these uh, strategies and um, resources. And what you'll do then is you're able to use any of these steps within your classroom, either for the mayor's challenge on your own or any of other issues that, might, that your students might feel is important to them um, in their community. So with that being said, we are gonna try breakout rooms. <laughs> so um, we have three, if when you see on your screen, something should pop up um, to join a breakout room just join and then if there's anybody that hasn't been assigned I'll be able to see that and I'll be able to put you in a room so and we will meet back here everybody will go back to the general session um, at around 11:50, where we will do a wrap-up a quick Q&A just in case we didn't get to any of your questions of some of your questions um, and then we should be done by 12 o'clock uh, so We'll see you all back soon. Not so much a question, but in our breakout room, um, Vivian brought up a really amazing research from the Everglades Rangers. Uh, if maybe you'd like to share that here. You're on mute, sorry. Hi, sure. Um, actually, it came up because Kelly Jackson mentioned that they had uh, done something with the Everglades, and I mentioned the fact that the Everglades Park Rangers, uh, headed by the Yvette Cano, she's their education person, are doing free virtual field trips for the schools. They will tailor it to whatever you want in terms of grade level and topic, of course, connected to the Everglades. And the way they set it up is that Yvette Cano was in her office and was leading the virtual trip from there. And then they actually had a ranger in the Everglades that would then go, you know, live on location type thing and do whatever, present whatever part it was. So they did an excellent job. She scheduled it. It was scheduled. Um, our entire school had the option to participate. So they did it over several days and they set it up for about an hour, hour and a half, but she'll work with you for whatever you want. If you want, I'll put it again in the chat. Uh, if you want her information because she really really is excellent. Yes, please share that. Yeah, that would be great. And I've just shared her email in the chat. Uh, oh, the, awesome. Okay. Great. Thank you. You yeah, can tell her I sent you. <laughs> <laughs> you got a referral fee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's always nice to know how, how different organizations are adapting to this new new normal here. So it's it's nice to see that um, that they're able to offer some things like this, um, even if it's a virtual tour, that it's still an opportunity that schools can um, take advantage of. Yeah, and, and the neat part is not only, you know, sometimes you go on a virtual tour and it's okay, you're seeing, you're seeing, but you're not really interacting. The mm -hmm. students could interact both with the vet and with, in this case, it was Ranger Denise. Uh, they could, you know, she did her presentation, but then they could ask questions and the whole thing. So it was really, really neat. And okay. it really, you know, it really brought it home in a way that, uh, you know, it was accessible to the students. Great. I apologize that we're, our group was a little bit <laughs> later. We had uh, great conversations. Um, and uh, we hope that you had a chance to um, really go think about how you can use this process um, to have your students think about a project. Uh, and again, the, we went through the exercise specifically with the mayor's challenge. And in our group, I think there was a lot of ideas already on what they can do uh, with the issue they chose. And so I think uh, to conclude, um, we really want to focus that the strategy statement will be the jumping off point for then an action plan. And the main thing is for them to identify 
who they're going to target, who their specific stakeholder is going to be that they think will be able to solve that issue. So, um, Alex, I'm not sure. Did you guys have a chance to come up with a sentence that you wanted to share that somebody yeah. else wanted to share? Great. We did. Um, I, could, I took the notes so I can um, I can share it. Um, I'll just I'll just say it because it's on a different screen. Um, so we our issue that we focus on is plastic pollution. Um, and so the statement that we came up was, um, we want the county to increase education, which will result in awareness on how to dispose of plastics and the effects of single use plastic. Um, and in order to achieve this, we'll, we will contact our officials either through letters and attending meetings to suggest more education, including public service announcements and also using social media um, in order to contact the, or educate the community on the problem of plastic pollution. Awesome. Um, Marika, do you have somebody from your group? Did you guys get to, I know we had a lot in our group, we had a lot of conversations, so I don't know if we specifically went, are able to share a strategy statement, um, but did you guys get a chance to do so? Yeah, we were, we were able to come up with a, um, I'll just, uh, a poster campaign idea. So we wanted to address the community to educate on where to recycle goods, which will recite in less littering um, plastic waste. Uh, to achieve this, we will do a poster campaign, an informative poster campaign in community spaces, such as the publics, banks, schools, et cetera. Great. And in all three um, groups, I think uh, we should put uh, as well, and as in order to achieve this, we will create a public service announcement uh, to inform the community about the issue. Um, again, because we want to bring it back to this is something you can use for the City of Miami Mayor's Challenge, but you can also use it for other issues uh, along. And this could be a good way, um, and we have this as a resource under the Green Leadership Grants um, information, because this could be a great exercise to go through for students. Um, and then one of the things they can do is submit a green leadership grant to address the issue that they have decided um, to, to try to solve. So we want to get then to in the last couple of minutes to just some general Q&A if we have not um, answered some questions um, that you might have about the program in general, uh, submission, so if you can, um, do, does anybody have any questions? They can unmute themselves and we can kind of answer those. Just one question, Barbara. Uh, high school is participating in the green building competition. I know that there is a grant of $150 to reimburse for the uh, materials. If we have more than one team for a school, we can apply to more than one grant? Yes, so you would apply for that grant for each of the teams. So, um, you know, in total, you can apply for $300. So, you know, $150 for each of the teams. And additionally, we can apply to another grant, the, the monthly uh, topic grants. Perfect. Yes, thank you for that. So even though you can only uh, get one of the monthly grants per year, um, you can submit for the competition grant or the Eco Summit grant in addition to that. Um, just so you guys have, you know, so you could get up to $350 for a specific topic, those monthly grants, and then you can also get, um, you know, uh, up to $350 for your Eco Summit, and those high schools specifically, and I see Carmen as well too, uh, here, they could do $150 for the uh, design and build competition. And for those of you who are not familiar, I just want to plug that because um, that's super neat. In February, at the end of February, we will be doing a, a competition that's called the Design and Build Competition for high schools. And they have teams that will be working with FIU students from the Landscape Architecture Department, um, which are help, will help them to create 3D models about an issue uh, relating this year to building along the bay uh, and looking at adaptations of sea level rise. So um, that'll be open to the public if we have it in person, obviously, with CDC guidelines in line, or we might have it online and it'll be open to the public so you guys can can join that as, as well. Um, are there any other 
questions? So Aaron uh, has a question about the Eco Summit. So we mentioned that right now it's to be determined <laughs> uh, for high schools. And we're even thinking on a case-by-case -case basis. There are some schools that are combination schools that, have, that are six through 12. And so they might wanna have their middle school students also participate in uh, this uh, Eco Summit that we're focusing this Youth Eco Summit. Um, it is open to everybody. Even if you're in elementary school, um, you, know, you could come to the Eco Summit that we're specifically creating for the high schools. Um, hopefully, you know, in April, it'll be a different story with the pandemic, but if we put it in, um, if it goes online and it is done virtually, then it'll be open, uh, to the public. So, yep, that's a good question, Erin. Is there any other questions? No? Awesome. Well, um, Alex, do you want to mention the survey and some of the resources that we'll send out? Yeah, so after this uh, meeting, maybe by Monday, I'll be sending out a recording of the meeting in addition to all of the resources that you guys used during the breakout sessions, all those worksheets um, and PDFs that you guys worked off of, we'll include that as resources in that email. Um, and then also a survey, obviously, to let us know what you thought of to this morning's session. Um, and then otherwise, as always, if you do come up with any questions, you know my email and I'm available whenever, so. Great. And um, we just want to thank you very much for having spent a, a little bit of your Saturday with us. Um, and we really support, we want to support you. I know this is a tough year for everybody. Um, you know, as a parent myself, <laughs> I see it on the uh, other end. I'm a five-year-old and a 12-year-old. So, uh, and I was a teacher for, for 12 years as well. So I know what you guys are, are going through. So any way that we can help please let us know and how we can support you. Um, and we really appreciate you. So thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And we will look forward to speaking with all of you um, throughout the, the rest of this year. Thank you for everything. Thank you, Barbara. Thank, thank you, Alexandra. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're emailing the survey? Yes, I will. OK, awesome. OK. Have a nice year, everyone. You Thank too. you too. Stay safe. Stay safe. Stay safe.